Greetings once again. Here we are at House to House Discipleship Institute. I am your evening pay, which means mouth, and I am going to speak out of the heart of the Father through the book of Malachi. We're going to go to the last chapter of Malachi. Some of you are familiar with it. Um, I've been around for a while. I've been sitting on this, holding on to this, but one of my mentors that I honor, uh, of many that I honor, uh, he just began on Genesis of Genesis. If you haven't heard that, it's because you haven't come to the beginning of your Genesis. The word Genesis means better seed beginning. So in the beginning, before we even turn to any other scriptures, the Father had hidden what I'm about to speak, and this is in the middle, <laughs> in the middle from Genesis to Revelation. So in the book of Malachi chapter 4, uh, I got my computer on. I'm going to not even turn there. I'm just going to go ahead and speak out of my heart tonight. It's an introduction. Uh, one of the ministry sons in the house here who had moved in several years ago turned 30. And the father says, now you can take out those notes that you've had on the preparation of a son and the introduction of what the father waits in a son as he's waiting to prepare him. And I'm going to give you 18, actually I'm going to not enumerate them because we're not going to be religious, but I'm going to show them to you by mentioning them so that you can ponder them. Because if we're wise, a wise man ponders those things that he hears. So the first one is uh, the preparation of a father. The father's pain, the father's vision, the father's patience, the father's preparation for sons, the father's shaping of the sons of ministry, and the father's instruction, hallelujah. Listen to this closely. The father's instruction to process. Where, when have you heard that? We don't. Because we always listen and hear the Father's instruction, but they never, they never really share with us that the instructions we're giving you is to help to produce in you the process, the path of your process. So you can come to the last one, the Father's advancement through the generation. That's why you and I are seeing and we're failing to see. We aim and we see the target, but it seems that it doesn't come to pass. And we'll go through that here. And then the next uh, part two uh, will be the father's dilemma, the father's order, the father's inheritance, the father's heart, the father's covenant, the father's voice, the father's maturation, the father's garments, the father's anointing, the father's relationship, and the father's honor. A lot of us are listening and hearing, and that's why we want to become apostles, so we entitle ourselves apostles, because the honor is more than just saying hi. And some pastors go, yeah, you're right. So you don't know if he's saying hi back or he's hi. So I want to bring clarity and simplicity to you, because a lot of us are high in our own flesh. We're high on our own tower. We're high in our own entitlement. We're high on stepping on others to reach our pinnacle. We are high sitting on the judgment seat that should be always exercised with mercy and righteousness. But because we haven't been taught the Father <laughs> preparation and process, we lack one or the other. We're strong in one, but we lack the other. The Father wants to bring us balance. So that's why I'm, I'm steering myself, I'm letting him steer me to bring these truths once and for all so that we, they can be heard or heard by you, the viewer and listener. Whether you're one or 1,000 or 100, what matters is that I can reach one son. I know I have a son sitting in front of me and another son sitting over on the other side and the other son but what I'm trying to do is bring truth that is relevant. In the, in the book of Peter's, he said, Be ye established in present truth. 
He didn't say be established in truth. He said in present truth. So we hear this coin phraseology going around all of us, old wine skin and old wine. I'm gonna tell you something, it may hurt some of you that are preaching reformation with new wine. We haven't entered into the uh, yeah, new wine or the new wine skin. Father's been preparing us for over 2,000 years. We have been culminating and bringing forth a truth that has variables and constants. The truth of the name. We have to go back to the reformation of the name. In the book of Genesis, he reveals his name. In the book of Genesis, his name has to do with salvation. His name, his name was sent to manifest at a appointed time, and that word, that name became salvation. Mm. Salvation, according to the word, has three dimensions, common, great, and eternal. You can't get into them realms until you begin to go back to your Genesis. Yeshua came and he had to go back to his Jerusalem. In the book of Acts, it started in uh huh, Jerusalem, Yahrusalem, with a Y. But I'm not going there. I'll leave that for the other scholars. I'll leave that for the other revelator, uh, revelators. But I will take you to Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, and the heart of the children, <laughs> and the heart of the children to their fathers. Least I come and smite the earth with a curse. If you're still waiting to see the curse come to pass, it's already here, the curse of immaturity. The curse of immaturity. We are immature. We are not fully full grown, though we should be, but the prophetic realm has robbed us from truths because we're trying to prophesy everybody's the head and not the tail above and not beneath and we are prospering because now the wealth of the wicked is being transferred to the righteous. But if you really weigh out in balances, there's not too many righteous in the planet or we would see a lot more done. First of all, maybe we got to go back to Genesis, meaning Bereshit in Hebrew, in the beginning. One of my mentors that I opened up with in mentioning as I'm going and looking for the path uh, his name is Shepherd John Flores from Redmond of Truth Ministries out of uh, Oregon. You ought to climb on and you ought to hold on to a uh, run on Jacob's ladder if you want to learn and understand how deep and how high and how wide and how uh, the length of the Father's Ahava love is for you and I. In Malachi chapter 4, he goes forth now and he sends, he sends the spirit of Elijah through Malachi, who is going to now, he's going to cross over into the other realm from the outer court or from the law of Moses into the, uh -huh, the favor of Yeshua Mashiach. In sundry times, he spoke to the fathers, by the prophets, now he's speaking to us uh, through the Son. So I want you to see this because we're here right now. I should go ahead and read the whole chapter because you might not have ever seen this verse. But there's a, a verse in Obadiah, the last verse. Maybe we should go there. Let's go back from uh, uh, <laughs> Habakkuk. It's right after, before Habakkuk, Obadiah, then Habakkuk, and Zechariah, and <coughs> but Obadiah, you'll see the 21st verse, and this will blow your minds. This is how important it is. This is how powerful it is, is to begin to consume, to eat meat, and stop drinking milk. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the milk of the gospel. I'm thankful, thankful for the first dimension of the gospel, the first mention of his name, Jesus the Christ. I learned it. I learned it well. And now I'm at the point that I've come to a place where my diet has changed. I crossed over from the Red Sea. I crossed over the Jordan 
and now I'm at the very apex of the river. The river that has two <laughs> trees that are flowing with oil. And out of the throne flows this river. And the throne is ran by the Father, and the Father speaking to His sons that are willing to take hold of their Genesis experience. I'm telling you, I am ruined because I'm hearing the proceeding word, a present truth word, from a, a simple man. For all of us are simple. If we can just see the simplicity of who we are, we can revelate in this word, in Genesis of Genesis. And I'm titling this, The Preparation of the Sons. The Preparations of the Sons that will come out of Zion. The sons, and that also includes you daughters. I'm speaking prophetically now like the scripture speaks. You're all sons. Yes, we know there are sons and daughters, but the father directly wants to raise up the many-membered son made up of many sons that the son is the head over the many sons. Okay, let me read the verse. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be Yah. And the kingdom shall be Yah. Well, no, King James says Lord, right, but I don't use the word Lord any longer because the Lord, as I studied it, led me to Baal. Oh. And I'm thinking if I'd been doing this and if I would have woke up to maturity a long time ago, I wouldn't have been using Lord and I wouldn't have been uh, summing a pagan deity by the name of Baal. And that's who we have today all over. He comes with his goodies. Uh, remember the movie uh, with uh, Tom Hanks? And he had a box of chocolate. Who remembers that movie? Forrest Gump. Oh, Forrest. Forrest Gump said, this is how life is. You can take a bite and put it back and have a bite of something else. And we've been played through by the schemes of the enemy. And according to the scripture, it says, be not ignorant of his devices. You know, when I read a manual, when I buy a new stereo or something new, even my phone, it says it has Bluetooth and you can hook up other devices. Well, why would I want to do that when I have my phone that does everything that these other devices do, but this is mine? The Father says, my sons don't need other devices. But we have fallen for other devices, and that's why we're not sure what we're doing. But I'm going to take my time, I'm going to take my part, and I'm going to start instructing those sons that are listening, that are ready to come into a fold. According to John 10, John 15, there's a fold, hallelujah, that needs to come in. If you remember the principle when Yeshua was coming in, he was on a, a male donkey, full-grown donkey. He was sitting on it and his feet were on the, the fold of that donkey and it's called a young fold or a young colt. Well, if you get the revelation, his feet were on the fold because there's a new five-fold coming in. There's a new fold that is in total submission to the headship of Yahshua Mashiach, of yod heh wah -Hey, <laughs> of Elohim, Elohim, your heavenly Father, Abba. Come on now. So with all that said, I want to go back over and give you the principles so you can write them down if you have a pencil, paper, if you have your phone, then uh, record what you're watching or listening. But the first one's the Father's preparation. This is, this is an important term that will lead you, hallelujah, to the advancement of the kingdom that is at hand right now. The Father's instruction, the very first thing. The second thing, the Father's pain. Do you know why some of us fathers go through pain? Because a lot of the sons won't receive the instructions. Mm. The Father's vision. 
The Father's vision, family. When we get to that part right there, a lot of us aim and we see the target and we shoot our arrow. But it seems that we do not hit the target, though we have the vision. Oh my good, if wow. you can only wow. see it. You got to have the proper vision, and I'm telling you, I got it, I seen it, it came alive to me because of the Genesis, Genesis message that my friend, huh, a mentor, a father, who's bringing forth the Father up out of me. The book of Shavuot. What do you mean the book of Shavuot? Well, the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Sheliacs. Mm. They're trying to say that the church was birthed in chapter 2 of Acts, but Shavuot was a, come on, an experience that Leviticus teaches. So it was already here. It was just hidden from you and I. And now if we go back to the Genesis, we will see it. We will see the end from the beginning. We will see how the Father major on that feast to bring forth a maturity level because now we should be crossing over. The Father's patience, the Father's preparation for sons, the Father's shaping of the Son's ministry the Father's introduction and the process. The Father's intro, listen to me. There's a preparation and then there's an introduction. <coughs> oh, that's powerful. The Father's advancement through the generations. What's he advancing through the generations? The very truth of the Genesis, better sheep. The Father's Son is hidden in that. The holy altars, the Kadosh altars, the altars that were guarded by the two cherubims with flaming swords of fire. Why? Because he didn't want to keep you and I in suspense. If you got closer to the swords of fire, you were consumed. You, you. Yeah, this flesh, this meat, this kindness was consumed by the flaming swords of fire that the cherubims, one to another, cried out, Kadosh, 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 because it was drawing a man, it was drawing a family, it was drawing a mother, it was drawing the children into a place of spiritual impartation where once and for all the enemies of the land had no more say in the matter. Let's go through them. The first thing that you're going to endure. A father goes through this. Watch. The father's dilemma. The father's order. I'm talking about our heavenly. I'm talking about yod Hey wah Hey. i am talking about Abba. I'm talking about Avinu. Ooh, come on now. I can feel that. The Father's inheritance. The Father cannot, listen to me closely, the Father cannot release His inheritance the way He had already formulated in the Scripture because we're not willing to study. His name changed. The law changed. And the garments of the priest changed. We're under the order of Melchizedek. Sadiq, righteousness, you can see it, it's one of the letters in the Aleph Tav. Hallelujah. The Father's heart. You know and I know that there's still some stony heart left in us, and we need that heart of flesh. Come on. The Father's covenant, the Father's voice, the Father's maturation, the Father's garments, the Father's anointing, my goodness, everybody wants to be anointed and we've got no garments to hold the mantle. The Father's anointing, the Father's relationship and the Father's honor. We honor fathers by a handshake. We honor fathers by saying good morning, here's a cup of coffee and I'm gonna show you biblical honor. I hope you remain with us and you continue to go further as we, yeah, as we tread water and deep 
and dive deep to see what present truth, what proceeding word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of, uh-huh. See, some of you aren't trained in your mind to discipline. You said, Lord, and I told you I won't use Lord any longer because I came to find out it led me to Baal, a pagan deity. Baal, Lord, Baal, Lord, Baal. There's so many other words in scripture that you can use to define who your father is. Mine used to be the Lord, Baal. But I came out of that realm and now I can honor him by speaking his name, Abba, Yahuwah. Yahuwah, Ooh. Yod, Hey, Wahe. I could feel the life flowing out of me because it's not me. I made a choice to make a difference in my mind. This mind shall become the mind of Mashiach. Let this mind be in you that was also in him. So I just made a transfer in my mind and chose to think like him. Why? Because he shows me how I should think. I showed you in the book of Obadiah that sons will come out of Zion. Deliverers. Well, another word for a deliverer is son. Because the son, the only begotten son, was also the deliverer. And if you can understand that, he also was the one that opened up the blind eyes. Mm. Hey, hallelujah. Now go with me to Luke chapter 24, the last chapter of Luke. I got to go there because I want to show you the progression. In the scripture, King James Version, there's Napios, Pation, Technon, Weos, and Pater. Okay, those are five levels of scriptural growth. There's certain terms, do loss and uh, <coughs> teleos, teleos. See, it's, it's Greek. It has its own strength, but there's really not the power of the original word that came from the mouth of the Father. Do you remember when Adam was in the garden? Oh my goodness, we got to go there. See, go to... Uh, I just said to go to Luke, but let's go to Genesis because I want to stay in, in the right form here. Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for Genesis chapter 3. Woo, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my Father. I thank you for this. And he says in verse 5, for Yah does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as <laughs> gods, knowing good and evil. Now listen to me. The prosperity message took that verse and conformed it to the nuggets of <laughs> revelation that I'm about to give you. If you can just sow a seed of a hundred bucks, you will be highly favored. It, ah, if you sow a seed for, a, I feel it right now, for a hundred bucks, you shall be healed and your debt shall be removed. Well, if you're following for that lie, then you're still honoring without knowing the plague of Baal. The plague of Baal. What's a plague? Well, look at around you. We call it Corona. And it's, I'm not talking about the beer. I'm talking about man-made plague. If you stay focused on the name, you don't have to be called God. There's only one true, Yahuwah. Are you listening to me? Watch the verse, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah. Well, here it says Lord God. So if you read it when I read it, 
1976 to now, and I and I hadn't been disciplined and processed to cross over and come to know the his name out of Genesis one in the beginning, Bereshit. It was hidden in that word. So this is the King James transliteration. So now I've been trained to call him Lord God, Lord God, Lord God. So for years I was walking in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden, call him Lord God, and I never really seen the inheritance come my way, the process come my way, the generation that was passed down from one generation, Abraham, all the way to the last generation, Yeshua, which you and I are the, uh -huh, if we go into the generation, I'm not going there, I'm going to stay back true to the scripture. Just follow with me now, because I'm going to open up your understanding to true father-son relationship. A lot of the things you're hearing right now are true, but they're out of season. They're true, but they're not in line with covenant. Because to make covenant, then you got to know his name. And to make covenant, you got to know the blood. And to make covenant, you got to split animals in half. Why? Because he was showing you the difference between the two cherubim angels with flaming swords of fire that had to split the offering. That's why he told Abraham, bring me. It's in the scripture. So when you give him a bull, uh-huh, a lamb, a she-goat, a turtle dove, and a pigeon, you're giving him the five-fold ministry that had been hidden through Scripture. Mm. But we don't see it because now all the books that were written by all the ones that still didn't honor the Father with His true honor by mentioning Him by name. Oh, come on now. That's why fathers are not wanting you to call me by name. I'm not God. I'm not Lord, I'm not Yahuwah, but I'm a servant son. That's the title that the father's looking for, for all his sons and daughters that make up the corporate man, the son out of Zion. Okay, let's read on. I don't want to, oh my goodness, where am I at? Where am I going with this? Okay. And then in the same, in the garden, if you go back to the, uh, chapter 3, I want you to see this. <coughs> her eyes were open. That her and her husband ate. They were walking in the cool of the, in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from Adam and his wife hid themselves. We've been hiding behind fig leaves and aprons, a form of godliness and never coming to the truth. Studying, studying, and studying, and not willing to search a little deeper. If you go to different translation, you'll be challenged to see that they changed the name. Do you know that the New King James Version now went back and the American Standard went back to his original Hebrew name? But see, we think that's wrong and they're trying to bring in heresy because you've been sold a bill of a gay king, Hymus, King Hymus. Study it. Go to the encyclopedias and see his background. Yeah, he was a homosexual king. I know that hurts, but if you don't understand it, look at the broader picture. When the artist, who is the painter, Yeshua Mashiach, when he was, yes, drawing and fanning the background for the colors of time, moments, seconds, days, weeks, months, years, <laughs> and he got us to the point of knowing the future, the past and the present. You and I were written in the volume of the book. If you stay tuned with me, you'll understand what they finally understood and why they said, look at what, he, what they answered. <laughs> My goodness. We were naked and they sewed fig leaves and aprons together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of Yahuwah walking in the garden in the cool of the day of Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah among the trees of the garden. Do you know the trees represent me and you today, right now? We'll go back to that. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. We're going to go back to that and show you how to John, the blind man, sees trees. And if you just press the right buttons, you'll know that whoever's trying to uh, insult and assault you, they'll have to bow down and say, surely Yah is in you. Until we see each other, we'll go back to the present truth, to the pay, the mouth as the Father speaks. I pray that you uh, get a hold of some of this and prepare yourself to reach another height of your personal walk and journey with the Father like Luke chapter 24, the two brethren in the Emmaus Road. We'll go back through that. But until we see each other again, Shalom. Apostle Robert Gonzalez thanking you for tuning in until we see each other again. Remember, you're the terabyte. Don't let terror come your way. You're a son of the Most High. He's equipped you to see the path before you, the steps of a good man, wife, husband, children are ordered of Yahuwah. Till we see each other again, Shalom. And